Okay, let's get started. We're going to cover how to activate VF3 Haas Mimic Machine. We'll go to Applications and we'll choose the one we want. We'll open Launcher. Looking at the screen, we see Immersive Training System Initialize Complete. Press Power On. Our Power On button is here. We turn it on. At this point, after powering on, we need to power up the machine. The machine has just been powered up and homed. When selecting Power Up Restart on a Haas machine, you're actually homing the machine. The Mimic machine doesn't really show a home movement, but it is resting in its home position. The x-axis is all the way to the left, and the y is all the way forward, and the z is in its z position, much like a Haas real machine does. We're going to learn how to jog the machine. We're going to learn how to tool change, and we're going to learn how to probe a work offset, both x and y. But to understand these types of movement of the machine, we have to learn about mode select keys. Mode select keys allows us to operate the machine in many different ways, from manual controls all the way to automatic controls. Mode select keys are listed here. Edit, Memory, MDI, Manual Data Input, Hand Jog, Zill Return, and List Programs. The first mode select key we're going to be working with is Hand Jog. Hand Jog is very important because in combination it allows us to move axes. What I mean by combination, first thing we want to learn to do is activate it. Once we activate it, we want to set an increment value so we can move the machine under controlled distances. Well, at the very top of these, the 0.001 one tenth of a thousand means when I activate this and I use the manual pulse generator here, it's only going to move each click one tenth of a thou. If I activate this one, the top number, we move each click one thousandths of an inch. And this one will be ten thousandths of an inch and so on, point 0.1. So ten clicks on this should move one inch. So let's activate this and see how it works. So we activated the hand jog. We're going to activate a distance, a point 0.1, and we're going to choose an axis. When I choose this axis, you'll see it highlighted up here on the machine. So from when we home the machine to pull away from a Haas machine, we always rotate in negative direction. So as you can see it, can you see the vice move? As the vice moves, it's moving to where I want to. You got to keep it in close. And if I choose that axis, again, we move negative away from the limit switches and we're out in the middle there. Now to move the Z down, it's identically the same way. We're moving them back. So again, let's review this. Hand jog, distance, choose your axes, and rotate. As you choose different increments, you get more control over distance movement all the way till you can not even see it moving. But if you look up here, the fourth place to the right of the decimal, when I move it, it is actually counting them and moving them. We need to be able to walk around the machine and so we use our mouse to be able to do that. We can rotate around and see all angles of this machine. The middle mouse button holding it down we can zoom up and down. If we go left and right it still does it or we can roll the mouse. The right button mouse does nothing but in combination with the left and the right it allows me to pan the machine. I want you to take time and practice that because it's very important that we can move around the machine. The tools, the way they're laid out, as such, you can see here's tool one. Now if I power up restart now, it just homes the machine. It doesn't rotate anything here, but right here, if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, this is going counterclockwise, we need to call up tool eleven. It doesn't put it in memory, so it doesn't have the same functionality as a side mount, but you just count them on the side. So I'll rotate around. I'm going to choose the mode select key, MDI. Make sure there's nothing in the active memory. If there is, I need to make sure I erase it. It is gone. Over here in input, I will use the alpha keys to type in my code for doing a tool change and what tool number I want. So the tool change is an M word. 
an M word such as M6. That is a machine builder's code that tells it to swing the arm around, rotate the tool, and put it into the spindle. They create all that programming to do that. So we never have to worry about it. So MDI, I come down here and I type in T11. I check what I put in there. It looks really good. And then M, alpha key, and numeric key, M6. Call up tool 11 and do a tool change to that. I right enter it and it puts it up here in active program in MDI. I hit M6. Now pay attention to here. It's going to move fast and as I hit this it changes. And there's my probe tool. I can choose my jaw key again, move a value, set an axis, and rotate negatively to get the tool closer to it. That's why we need to learn how to jog because we're going to be using this. I'm going to use the Y. Now I can't really see the Y, but if I take my mouse, rotate it around, I can see it and I can zoom in, get inside the machine, and I can move now the Y. My Y is active. Go negative and you can see I'm coming over it. I want to find the edge of the part. Now I'll bring the Z down and the Z will come down as well. As I get closer, I need to learn to go slower, so I'm going to get back to the front where I can see it again, roll my mouse in, and I can get closer to this and see it, bring the Z down. As I get closer to a part, you need to practice to go slow because these machines move very fast. So I'm going to go to 10 thou, a little more control, and you can see it's a little slower and I have more control over it. As I bring it down in position for setting my work offset, on my x-axis I can see it I can rotate it around it looks like I'm low enough there I can rotate it here and I can probably go just a little bit lower huh uh, just a little bit on the Z so I'll bring it down just a little bit more now I have my my ball where I want it at this point now we can jog into the X and set our work offset now let's use the probe to set the offset we're gonna scroll in closer come into it and we're going to move it, hand jog, one thousandth of an inch on the X, check in my axes, and now I'll jog it positive to go into it. As it gets closer, when it lights up, I have found the X coming slower, slower. As it hits, you'll see it turn red around the ring as it makes contact. So it's hitting the edge right now. I need to back off till it stops. Change my increment value to one tenth and slowly bring it into the edge. Good hit. I'm going to back off. Click once and there it is lit. So we have that set now. From here we're going to go to our offset page to set our X. We'll select this. This is our G54. Our machine distance is this value here. We want that machine value to be in here. And to do that all we need to come down here and hit power part zero set button in the function keys location. As I hit it this has now been populated from this value here. We still have to move it over to the center. The ball is 400 thousandths in diameter. We still need to move it the radius. So what we're going to do is arrow back, highlight X, and we got to go positive. So we're going to go 0.2 of an inch, 200 thousandths, and hit enter. And that will move it to be dead center. Now, we're going to jog this up on the Z. Now we're going to jog it away on the X and we want to go negative direction to pull it away. We want to bring the Z up, rotate, zoom, ro let's move back a little bit, roll my mouse back, come over here to make sure I'm behind it, and I want to position it for the Y. So I'm going to use the Y movement and I'm going to go positive on that behind it. I cleared it. I will move it back on the X, 
positive. Let me rotate it around to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to rotate this to be behind it. And then I'm going to rotate here to make sure I'm clear on the Z, which I am. So I'm using my mouse controls, two mouses to pan. I will move it a little bit more on the Y positive. Let's get it behind it. Then I will rotate this around again to look from the front and move it on the X. And now I'll bring it down on the Z. I'll pull it, rotate around to make sure I'm clear. And I can bring it down. And it looks like the ball will be able to hit the Y axis. From here, I will go over here and choose it to. Over here, I'll change it to a thousandths, move it on the Y, and I'm going to move it negative into the part. As I get closer, let's get a little closer here. You can see that I'm coming closer to it. And I'll move it a little bit more till it lights up red. And I'll back it off till it's not red anymore. Change my value to a tenth of a thou and go again. Move it back. See it turn on and off when I click it? Click, click. Okay, so we're there. We're right on the edge. Again, I will go to my offset page. And now we're going to be setting the Y. We'll move it over to the Y. We'll use part zero set. And now we see my value for the Y offset has updated. We still have to add the radius of the tool. And we need to go in the negative direction. So we're going to add a negative point two. We'll right enter that. Now we have established our Y plane. The Z at this point, it should read zero. So to change that to zero, I'll put zero and put F1 to change it and override it. Now this is an important button. F1 acts as an absolute value. Whatever I type in the input, it will put it in. So if I put one point and put F1, it changes that to one. If I put zero, F1, it'll change it. Now we just established our X plane and our Y plane. This is where we got to learn to use our machines. If we want to move this away from it, we're actually moving the spindle direction in the positive direction for the Y. So I will choose hand jog, one thousandths, my Y axis, and turn this positive. And you can see it pulls away from that safe. I can increase the value and move it further away. Now I know I'm totally clear of it. I'll unzoom this a little bit, rotate around further away, bring it here, and I want to bring that tool up. We're going to learn a new button, and this is called zero return. If I use zero return and I say I want to just move the Z axis up, I can choose the Z button and home just the Z. So my input shows Z. I'm at mode select key, zero return, and now I'm going to say home G28, and it'll bring the Z to the machine Z0 position. It's safe. I can see everything looks good. And now let's grab a tool to check our work offsets. Let's see here. It would be nice to find a pointy tool. And you guys can try on your own. Wish there was a ch oh, there's a chamfer, so that's... Let's choose a tool in the spindle, tool number four. One, two, three, four. So I'll go back, practice the code for tool changing. I'll go to MDI, check this area here, erase the program, type in T4M6, right enter, and do my cycle start button. And now we have a, a different tool in here. Should have a, just a little bit of a point. See the point? And that's what we're going to use, tool 4 on that. We'll zoom back. Now, we're going to do a code that is for verification. It's in your documentation of how to verify work offset. So let's add that verification code. 
we're going to first establish in our active program MDI page here. We have something in there, so we need to erase it. So I'm going to hit the erase button on the mode select key location. It's gone. Now in here we're going to type in some code. The first code we're going to put in is G0. G0 means rapid, go fast. The next one is G90. That's absolute programming. We're going to establish this as our origin and our absolute programming from there. So if we tell it to go one inch, it'll go this way. If we tell it to go negative Y, on the Y it'll go here. So that's your X and your Y. We're not talking about the Z right now. So the next one after that would be G54. G54, which is what we established in our work offset page here. So we're back up here. And then the next one we want to do is X0, Y0. And we're going to right enter that. Let's take a look at the code. Go wrap it, set absolute programming mode, use work offset one, establish your X and Y to the corner of the part. We'll hit cycle start and it'll go right to there. It barely moved, but let's home the machine and we'll do it again. And you can see the movement is on that part. So I can actually jog it to verify it. Since I already know how to jog, I'll hit the Z button and bring it down on the Z. We'll stop right there. I'll zoom in on it. Y looks good. And we'll rotate around and see the X. We established those two planes right on the corner. So that was really easy to do. We verified that we have an established work offset for our X and Y. We have not set the Z's yet. That is our next step. We'll go ahead and home that again by hitting zero return. Z, go home. Y go home. I really don't need to set the X to go home because we're going to be putting parts in there. 